Hi guys, and welcome back to our Excel for Data Science series, part six. So we've done correlation, independent, uh, dependent T, and single sample T, and now we're going to introduce you to independent T tests. So we made up some fake data here. Remember the tidy data rules. This does not actually play super nice with Excel, but it will help you transition to using other data science tools like R, SPSS, or Python. Almost everyone kind of adheres to tidy rules um, except Excel. So um, what we want to do is create a column for each one of our variables. And remember, each participant gets their own row. So we've made up um, five American League teams and five National League teams. And we just kind of made up a fake number of fans. So let's say this is the number of fan, average number of fans out of 10 games in the thousands. And so we want to know if one set of teams has a higher number of fans attending games than the other set. Because these are completely different sets of participants, so two, for two different leagues and they don't cross over, um, we would consider this an independent t-test because it's two independent groups. Okay. So we're going to talk about how to run this with the data analysis pack first. Okay. Now, I recommend tidy data. It does, it's a little obnoxious with the way Excel makes you do this. So if your data is not in order, for whatever reason, I'd tell you to highlight it, go to data, and click the AZ sort button, tell it to sort by the independent or categorical variable. And that just will help you um, do this next part easier because it does assume that you actually have them in two separate columns, which would be not tidy data. So I'm gonna click on data again, go here over here to data analysis, there's two different t-test options. One is assuming equal variances. This is the assumption of homogeneity, which means that you expect the variance between each group to be relatively equal. Uh, assuming unequal variances would assume that you don't expect them to be equal, and it applies a correction. I think it's the Welch correction. So let's do both of them and see what happens. So I'm gonna click OK. Variable one range is where you're gonna click and highlight the data that is um, just uh, one group. Variable two range is where you click and highlight just number two. And this is why I said that the, the data doesn't adhere to kind of tidy principles because uh, it would be easier to have them in two separate columns. Hypothesize mean difference. I expect maybe there's no difference between the groups. I don't have any labels here. I'm going to use alpha as 0.05 because it's kind of my industry standard, but you can change it to 0.10 if you want. And then I'm going to stick it in a new worksheet. All right. We're going to make all this a little bigger so that you can see what's happening. All right. So it gives me the mean for each group, which is really handy. But here's something to pay attention to, especially if you're doing this um, for a journal report. Um, pay attention to the fact that this is variance. That is not the standard deviation. That is variance. If you wanted the standard deviation, you would take the square root. Okay. So what we could do, let me move this up here, is do equals SQRT, open parentheses, click on that first variable box, close parentheses, just hit enter. So there's the square root for group one. I remember the rules on um, Excel and formulas. If you don't know those, go back and watch videos, I think, one and two. I can click to change to the black plus here and drag it over, and that's actually going to give me the standard deviation for group two. Okay. Now, we talked about how do I know if I should do equal variances or unequal variances. Well, if the variances are unequal, the uh, test will correct it for you. If the variances are actually equal and you run the unequal variances one, the correction will be lessened. So it actually is probably better to always run the unequal variances one. But in looking at these two numbers, since one number is twice the other size of the number, we probably should run that correction. So um, really, this if I wanted the standard deviation, that's just to help me see what they are to report them. Here is a good clue that I probably should run the other one. Okay. We'll do that in just a second. Okay. Observations here, the, the sample size for each group. So there's 10 people or 10 teams total, but there's five teams in each group. This pooled variance is going to come very handy in a little bit. So it's the sort of weighted average of the variances between the two. In this case, it's an average because they're equal. 
However, if the group sizes are unequal, this would be a weighted average towards the larger group. You entered the hypothesized mean difference. Degrees of freedom here is m minus 1 plus n minus 1. So nearly every degree of freedom is always n minus 1, but it's n minus 1 for each group. It tells us our t statistic here, which is the number of standard errors that these are apart. So this is not looking good. They're not very different. It tells us the one-tailed t-test, which a lot of people think would be kind of cheating. And I don't know which teams I would expect to maybe have more fans. Um, it tells you the critical t-value for a one-tailed test. We're probably going to focus more on two-tailed t-tests, and so this would be considered usually not significant. So if we wanted to write this up, we would report each mean, so 61.4, and their standard deviation, 13.28. We'll do the same thing for group 2, 19.5. We do the t value, open parentheses, the degrees of freedom, so 8, the actual t value, so 1.31, and then we'd report, I'm going to report two tail t. And I'm doing this in APA style. See, other styles are very similar, they just vary where you put the degrees of freedom. Now, the other thing we'd want to include here is the effect size. So, this is kind of what I have over here how to make a graph and then effect sizes. So I've written this out here just to show you, again, what that should look like. But let's calculate this effect size. So the D formula for this, um, I'm just going to stick it over here, is mean 1 minus mean 2 divided by the standard deviation pooled. And so this is the pulled variance here. So that actually makes it really easy because all we have to do is take the square root of this number. Okay, so we can do this in a formula version pretty easy. So we're going to do equals, let's just stick it over here, equals m1. So highlight uh, equals open parentheses, click on m1, minus sign, click on m2, close parentheses, division, SQRT, oh, I can't type, SQRT, open parentheses, pulled variance, close parentheses, we're done now, so we've done M1 minus M2, divided by the standard deviation pooled, so remember these are all variances, and hit enter. And so that's actually a pretty, uh, what a lot of people would think this is a large effect, it depends on the field you're in, but I would consider that a pretty sizable effect. And so I'd put that on the end here, d equals 0 0.83. And so this is not a significant difference, but there is a, a sizable effect, and that's probably due to power. So power is the ability to find effect if it's there. And right now what we have is only five people in each group. And so we probably need more, more teams numbers to really find this effect if it's truly there. It may be that we add more numbers and we find that the effect size is basically only biased by picking these teams. Okay, none of these numbers are real. I made them up. But um, right now we're looking at a low power situation. One last thing. Well, okay, graphs as well. But let's do that unequal variances samples. So data, data analysis. This time let's pick unequal variances. Okay. You would not normally run both. Um, just trying to show you guys what's happening. So I'm going to click on AL again, come down here, click on NL. Okay. Hypothesize mean difference is zero, and then we'll put this in a separate worksheet. Okay, didn't like something I did. So let's just cl click out of this, go back to the main sheet here. Okay, now let's try data analysis, unequal variances. Something unhappy about whatever I did. All right, these bad boys again. And now, something about not being on the same sheet there. Pull this up so you can see it. All right. So, assuming unequal variances here, you'll see that the main difference between the first 
sheet here where my variance is and my pulled variance and all that stuff and the second sheet here. So what's changing is this thing. So what, um, I'm assuming this is a Welsh satter width correction because that's the most common correction for um, unequal variances. This kind of looks like what they're doing. But the main thing that's happening is that all of this stays the same because it is what it is, right? And the T value also stays the same. So it's 0 0.3, et etc. However, what they've done is they've lowered the number of degrees of freedom to account for the inequality of the, var inequality of the variances. And so what that does is it makes their P values go up because the critical values are also going up. So essentially we're just making it harder for us to find a significant effect because we have to correct for the fact that the variances are not equal. And so we would um, say that we were doing a unequal variances T and report basically the same set of numbers. So we do T, now it's seven degrees of freedom, right, is 1.31. P equals, I'm gonna do um, 2.32. And our D value is actually the same. Whatever it was, I've already forgotten. <laughs> 0.83. So um, if I were reporting one, I'd probably pick this one because of the unequal variances. Um, but the nice thing about running the equal variances one is that it gives us a really important number we need for effect size. Okay. That being said, now let's talk about graphing this. So I'm gonna copy my means gonna make one more new sheet here and label this means paste those bad boys in there let's pull this up a little bit more okay this is AL and then NL a little bit lower down I'm gonna do the standard deviation so that I'm not tempted to treat these as two separate variables because they are not we're gonna come back here and grab these standard deviations And I'm gonna paste those as values. And we're gonna make a simple bar graph. So come over to insert, simple bar graph. So I'm gonna highlight these four little squares, pick 2D column. Now I'm gonna do this in APA style because that's my, that's my jam, but however you want to chart this up so we don't do chart titles. The big thing here is we're gonna add some X and Y axis labels. So add chart element, axis titles, horizontal and vertical. There are lots of ways to do this, but that's probably the easiest. I'll click in title and then just change that to baseball league. Okay. Click this title. Maybe super weird okay fan attendance attendance or attendance there it goes okay. hopefully I've spelled attendance right <laughs> um, the, the little background lines are not too bad too dark so they're easy to see now let's add some error bars so I'm gonna click on the series click add chart element error bars more options you want the control so i've talked about this in other videos but you just don't want to let excel calculate these numbers for you don't do that you are the scientist you are in control so click more error bar options we're going to click custom pick specify value and this is why we put them in a little different spot we're going to highlight the two one two under negative error value we're going to do the same thing so that the top and bottom are equal and then hit okay now that gave us the um, close this. That gave us one standard deviation around the mean. Okay. If you wanted a confidence interval, you would do two standard errors approximately around the mean. So you can change these numbers based on like what your goal was. If you want a standard error, if you want a standard deviation, um, all of those things are fairly common. You just need to tell people which what it is. And then because I hate Calibri, because no one publishes in Calibri. We might change this to Arial or Times New Roman. Okay. Uh, and then the only other thing I might do is make these bars um, a different color because printing options are usually black and white. So I might make this a light gray. Okay. Now I can do that here. I can do it 
change colors. I could actually double click on it and then it will pull up the sidebar over here and you could go nuts and make it full of like rainbows. Um, so lots of different ways to click these buttons, but this graph, much better representation. So if I think about my t-test, I said they were not very different. Um, and I can see here by looking at like the full range of the data that they're really, the effect size is gonna be large, but they're really not significantly different. And so that's part number six of our Excel for Data Science series. We've done all of our different types of t-tests. And so in the next couple weeks, we're moving on to correlation or regression, since we've already done correlation, and then getting into ANOVAS. So stay tuned, usually on Wednesdays, for more Excel statistics work.